Hey everyone, this is me, the Undead Viking, and these are some cards from Dome Crushers from Floodgate Games. Dome Crushers is what I would consider to be the best lunchtime game I have ever played. Uh, back when I used to work uh, in a big giant office building, um, you know, I'd get a half hour, an hour for lunch, but I would bring a backpack to work that had, you know, two to three, four, maybe even five games in there. Um, games that I could teach in, in just a few minutes and would not have a long period of time to play. And uh, Dome Crushers fits that perfectly. A, a, a game, a full game, is going to run you around 10 to 15 minutes. Um, it is a two-player game, and but you can teach it in about one minute. Each one of the cards in these decks, and there's two 12-card decks, uh, so each person gets one, um, has either an attack value on them, so like an, and like a cool little uh, critter on there, like this giant turtle there. That attack value is four, and then like it has an ability there. And you're going to be playing the card one of each, one way. You know, so you can play it like this, or you can play it like that. But the thing is, is that the, the abilities in the cards will affect the cards that are in play, and will affect the different strategies that you have. And plus, as the game progresses, you're going to, get to have a better and better idea of the cards that the person has in their hand. And so you're going to be able to react to that as well. So it isn't so much... The person who's lucky enough to draw the most powerful cards, it's the person that is clever enough to use the abilities on the cards in conjunction with their values uh, to put themselves on top at the end of a round. But enough about that. Let me show you how Dome Crushers is played, and then we will come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, this is all of Dome Crushers. It has two of these 12 card decks, and each deck is exactly the same. To begin the game, each person is going to draw four cards. Let me just draw four here, and I'll draw four here. Now, the round is over once both players have played all four cards. Now, the big thing is, is that um, any cards that are gonna be used to score for the round will be set aside and discarded. You don't get to use them again for the rest of the game. But any other cards, cards left in your hand, uh, cards that were used for abilities, cards that are face down, they are put back on top of the deck so that you get to use them again. That's a very, very important part of the strategy. So let me just go ahead and look at these cards that we have here. Now, as I said, these cards can be used in two ways. They can be used as attacks, in which case you're just going to use this attack power and you play the card like this. Or you use their ability, in which case you get this, and then you play the card like that. Any card user's abilities, as I said, will go back into your deck. So let's go and see what we got here. All right, so we got a two, a three, four, five, well, two, three, four, five, like that. So we have some, you know, not, not any of the big ones. There are ones that have like seven and six on them, but we do have a five. And the Mesmerize ability is really good. The Mesmerize allows you to turn an opponent's card face down. And so it's out of play, so they don't get to use that. Um, we have a draw card, uh, and then we have a couple of weaker cards here. Uh, another uh, draw card. This is a draw card uh, plus one that gives us like a, a plus one to our uh, you know combat score. And this one, a lay low, has a draw card a minus one. So um, you know, and let's. I want to use it in a bit. Let's see if we can get another card. So I'm going to play this as an ability, and I'm going to take the top card and see what we get here. So oh, this is a cool card actually. So this is Devastation Row. It has a pretty good attack with a five, right? But Devastation Row allows you to call to an end the round unless the other other player plays a Devastation Row card, in which case then you keep going. But see, that's a way for you to end the round early if you have more points than the other person, so you can kind of guarantee a win. So we'll go ahead and put that back in there. Let's see what we got for the other hand here. So... Uh, we got some of the big hitters here. We got a number seven here. Um, that is the Tactical Strike. Um, change one of your other cards from attack to ability or ability to attack. And when you do that, you actually, you know, of course, obviously you, you enact the ability that you have there. Um, here we have, you know, Brace for Impact, draw a card. We've seen that before. Uh, lay low, draw a card minus one. We've seen that before. And Galvanize, uh, plus two for each of your attackers. Now you might be saying, well, yeah, but it has a power six. That's pretty good, right? Well, yeah, but remember, if you use it as the Galvanize ability, then you're going to be able to put that card back into your deck and be able to keep using it. So let's actually, let's open up big. Let's take this Rhino. We're going to open up. We're going to say seven attack bar. Bah, ha, 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 ha. 
I'm going to crush you. All right, so the next player says, well, I don't really like that giant rhino, and I don't like that at all, so I, I, let's go ahead, maybe that's all he's got. Let's use the Mesmerize ability, because remember, we'd be able to use the Mesmerize card again if we use it as an ability. So we're going to use that as another ability. We're going to Mesmerize that, ha ha ha, turn it upside down. So now that he's going to get it back, but it's not going to be worth anything here. So let's let's get let's get let's get tricky. Let's let's go ahead. He doesn't have any attack power out. So let's put out a weaker one. Let's put a lay low out. And so they're like, oh, okay, so a two attack power, but technically we're winning because we don't have any attack power over here. All right. So let's see that too. Now I do like like you know draw. So let's let's match them. Let's put a two down and see where he goes with that. So. Let's go ahead, and now we have uh, this three and this six. So once again, we're getting tricky. So we're going to put this three down. So we have a total of five to there, two. And this is the last card, right? So now we have a kind of a decision to make. If we could draw a card, but that isn't going to do us any good at this point. And we you know, Termination Roar isn't going to do any good. And I want to keep this card more than I want to keep this card. So let's go ahead and put that down. So now we have a total of six and to a total of five. So depending on, you know, most likely, like, you know, we, we, you know we're going to hope that the card that the person has over here has some sort of reason why they'd want to, like, maybe you're, we're going to force them to use like a really, really big number again, like use a five or something to use that win. Because sometimes you will lose a round just so you can keep some good cards. Because ultimately, you're looking for the most total scored points at the end, which is something I'll talk a little bit more in, in the final thing. But So in this case, actually, because the player can play Galvanize, we can just add two to each one of these abilities, and that's going to give us the win anyway, because it's a five and a four, giving us a total of nine to six, which gives us the win. All right, so a couple things happen. I'll talk about this in more detail when I get to my final thoughts. But So first things happen is that these two cards and these two cards, because they were attack cards, are going to be like put over into the scoring pool. But because you lost with these two, you're going to turn these face down when you put them into the discard. And these are going to be put face up. Now, as the game is played, you're going to keep piling cards up this. And only the cards that are face up will be the ones that are going to be considered uh, like points, obviously. So everything else of the other cards, are you going to take those cards, so the cards in your hand, cards that you played as abilities, you're going to take these and you're going to put them on top of the deck. Remember, put them on top of the deck so you know what cards you're going to get. And do the same thing here. Put those there. And then you're going to draw four more cards. You're going to do the same thing over again. Now, this kind of, because of the fact that you're putting on top, you know what cards you're going to draw. So that allows you to have more strategy going forward. And it also gives the other player an idea of the cards in your hand and they can react to those things as well. And knowing that the other person knows what you have is a big part of the game because, you know, and also because of the fact that both the decks are the same, um, you know, you can kind of count on a certain number of cards being available. And the, you do get, each person gets one of these cards that details all the abilities of the cards and the number of those cards in the decks uh, for each one so you can always reference that as well so that is very very quickly you'll be able to teach this game in about five minutes but like the different strategies and and like synergies and the way the cards working with each other you know are there's a ton of different strategies you can use and you know because of the fact that you have both kind of some some you know exploratory knowledge that you learn as the game progresses and opens itself up and there is also a lot of secret knowledge it makes for some really really great decisions that you have to make one last thing uh with so the, the the game is over and then you go to totally other points the moment that one person can't draw four cards into their hand. The moment that that happens, then the game is done. And remember, it can end with that the termination roar. It can end with that as well. But um, that's just the round, obviously. But the, the game itself ends when like one person can't draw any more cards, and then you total up the points, and then whoever has the most obviously uh, wins the game. But I mean, the game is, is so straightforward and so awesome uh, but there's so much about it that I want to talk about that makes it awesome. And I'll do that uh, in my final thoughts.
All right, thank you for taking the time to learn how to play Doom Crushers. Now, I talked a lot about the different strategies and stuff uh, towards the end of the gameplay portion. And this is one of those games that, like, I, I've said this about a lot of games uh, over the last several years, where, like, you, you, you're you surprised by the depth of it, right? Um, and I think it leads right into the whole fact that, you know, and this is weird for me because I'm an exploratory gamer. I like kind of digging into a game until there's really nothing left there for it. Uh, and I just kind of get bored of the game at that point. But because of the fact that this game, you know, it, you'd think the exploration would be over quickly because it's just a deck of 12 cards and, you know, that's it. But the fact is, is that because of the cards' ability to be used either way, and because they work in weird conjunctions to each other, and the fact that the other player has the exact same cards, and they're using them in their ways with in conjunction with what they're doing as well, um, the conflict actually uh, creates a marvelous um, exuberance in the repeated plays that I've had. Um, it's one of those things where I've gotten done playing a game, and I lose because I always lose. And, and when I and I'll lose, and then I'll be thinking, well, what if I had played that card differently there? Or what if I had held on to that card? What if I had maybe just like you know, kind of maybe given up on like the first round, right? And just use the like more abilities than than points, so I could keep those cards in play and keep them running, and so then I can maybe, you know, score a lot more points with the next round, or things like that would, like, would, would pop into my mind. But then I would also, in the back of my mind, realize, it's like, well, then maybe that really wouldn't work, because while I'm trying to, like, you know, cultivate knowledge about my cards and put the right cards into my hands so I can have, like, a really good turn, um, the other player might recognize that and just start, you know, using up their cards really quick and and so then forcing the end of the game because they wouldn't be able to draw any more cards and you know, they wouldn't be able to put four cards in their hands so i can't use that build up time to like get myself set up i've i've, I've got to start winning some rounds and then it's like well do i use like i showed you do i use this card or do i do i do i hold it back do i do i use it for another turn and, or you know and playing like that mesmerized card you know on a on a card that they have you know might help you in the short term, but long term, you might be helping out the other player because you're giving them access to the card again. Things like that were constantly popping into my mind after I'd gotten done playing a game, after I'd moved on playing something else. I found myself just coming back to Dome Crushers over and over again. And I was just, once again, really, really surprised that a game that is basically 24 cards was just spinning the wheels in my head I, I i found myself just thinking about this game constantly my daughter was sick of playing the game with me because i was just like let's play it again let's play it again i want to try this again i want to try this again so uh, you know if you're looking for like and i i hate saying things like like filler games because i don't really consider this a filler game i i consider it a a, a really really awesome two-player combative experience right if you're looking for something like that if you're looking for something that is going to really really pay you dividends with the repeated plays and with the different strategies that you're going to figure out and that's going to be you know preying on your mind as you're like sitting there thinking about the game and like when you should be thinking about something else like getting your work done um then i strongly suggest uh that you check this one out this is one of those like like quintessential games that uh will always be in my travel bag and i will always bring it anywhere i go because man i just i found myself wanting to show this game off to anyone who would listen to me so there you go that is dome crushers if you have any questions about it please ask away i'll be happy to answer those as best as i can as always thank you very much for your time and until next time i'm the undead viking telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day all right bye, -bye.